We have seen them. We have heard them. You can't stop me. Fuck you. Definitely not scared of Mike Tyson. I'm the best there is. I want your heart. I want to eat your children. Praise be to Allah. The fight is on. It is on for Mike Tyson. 16 years ago, Mike Tyson became the youngest heavyweight champion ever. He was destined to be one of the greatest of his era. But a fight with the Buster stopped the historic path once laid before him. What an uppercut by Douglas, and down goes Tyson. It's over. Mike Tyson has been knocked out. Since then, his early career accolades have turned into late career fiascos. Tonight, Tyson will try to redefine his prize fighting status. Can this be the night of his boxing redemption? The fight is on. For Lennox Lewis, the champion who has proven his ability in the ring. But Lewis himself has also seen his path to the top take a turn for the worse. Most recently, between a rock and a mat place. However, he always answered his critics by avenging his losses. It's over! The question of his greatness has always come down to his opponents. And tonight, Lennox Lewis faces what he considers the last man standing in his era. Mike Tyson, you could say this is the last misfit in my era. Can Lewis finally gain the respect that he truly deserves as the heavyweight champion of the world? Can he once and for all silence his detractors by defeating another notable opponent? Tonight, it is on. Lennox, I'm coming for you. You want it? Come and get it. No more talking. No more waiting. Lewis versus Tyson. All right, thank you very much, JB. Well, Bobby, you need not be a Harvard graduate to know that Mike Tyson is going to come to the center of the ring and attack. Emmanuel Stewart and everybody else in Lennox Lewis camp says that Lewis is going to go straight at him and try to preempt Mike's aggression with his own aggression. That means this could be a brief blazing combustion. Is that the fight you expect to see? How could you not after hearing that from both people? Mike Tyson fights in one direction forward and one speed very fast. If Lennox Lewis does what Emmanuel Stewart said, comes out looking to get his pound of flesh, looking to get his respect and put some hurt on Tyson, they have to meet in the middle of the ring and there has to be an explosion. I think early, the first two minutes of the first round, maybe even the first two or three rounds, this fight has to be explosive. If someone's still standing after that, it may level off. I just don't think so. Good seats still available, but it's getting late. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson. Both of them getting up in years. Lewis will be 37 later this year. Tyson will be 36 at midsummer. Six inch height advantage on paper for Lewis. Some suspect it's even bigger than that. 13 inch reach advantage for Lewis. An advantage when he's outside. But can Mike get inside of that big reach advantage? And the unofficial weights, I say unofficial, well, let's call them the official weights because this was done on the Tennessee scale. 249 and a quarter for Lewis, 234 and a half for Tyson. Both camps agree, as we've told you, that the scale was off six or seven pounds heavy. They say Lewis weighs in the range of 243. Tyson, 234, not that, but rather about 227 or 228. Rules of the bout with Bobby Chez. Thank you, Jim. This fight, we use the rules of the Association of the Boxing Commissions. Scoring is a 10-point must system with no standing eight and no three knockdown rule. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case of an accidental foul, we go to the scorecards after round number four. As the challenger for the crown, Mike Tyson will walk out first. And here comes Iron Mike. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
like some brand new pussy. That's about to get Lieutenant, Phil, Lieutenant, 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 Lieutenant,
Everybody speak up. We got it. Speak up. Which one? All these people not going through there. Which one? You pick them out. Now here comes the debate about which six people will actually accompany Lewis on his walk into the ring. Well, what's good for the goose has to be good for the gander. They can't have it one way and not the other. Absolutely right. Crowd inside the arena, wondering what caused the delay. Maybe thinking that Lewis has been slow to exit the dressing room. But of course, he's right on cue. develop the psychology that they haven't gotten respect for their accomplishments and therefore still have great incentive. What's happening in this arena is a mark of disrespect to a guy who's won the heavyweight championship three times. You know what, it's, it's, you can never tell. Fans are funny, people are funny. They're only as good as yesterday, and if they didn't like it yesterday, you're no good. So Emmanuel Stewart goes in first. And Lennox Lewis steps between the ropes. Give you one overhead look at the most unusual ring setup in the recent history of boxing as Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis are separated by a cordon of security forces. And now ring announcers Timmy Lennon Jr. and Michael Buffer will start it off. Memphis, Tennessee. It is time for our historic night of boxing and our long awaited, much anticipated, featured bout of the evening. This bout coming away is brought to you by Lion Promotions, Main Events and Fight Night Inc. in association with Prize Fight Promotions as presented by the undisputed King of Beers, Budweiser. Boxing fans, the moment we've all been waiting for is here. It's the Rumble on the River. Tonight here in Memphis, Tennessee, we will turn the page to another chapter in the history book of boxing legends. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event. 12 rounds of boxing for the linear, legitimate, and universally recognized undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, the International Boxing Federation, the International Boxing Organization, and the great state of Tennessee. Representing the WBC, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisors General Covid, Paktipum, and Rex Ross Walker, for the IBF President Marion Mohammed, Supervisor Linda Torres, the IBO president and supervisor, Ed Levine, and the Tennessee Commerce and Insurance Commissioner is Anna Pope. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this contest on the 10 points must system are from South Africa, Alfred Bukwana, from Thailand, Anik Hongtongkam, and from Belgium, Bob Logis. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from the United States, Eddie Cotton. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, the time for talk is over. The time to fight is here. It's the time we've all been waiting for. Live from the Pyramid in Memphis, it's fight time. 
Introducing to you first the challenger on my right. He is fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing his traditional solid black trunks and hailing from Catskill, New York. He weighed in at 234 and one half pounds with a record of 49 wins, three losses, two no contests. He has 43 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the youngest man ever to win the heavyweight title, currently ranked the number one contender by the WBC. Please welcome tonight's challenger, the explosive two-time heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Iron Mike Tyson. And hiding out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with red letters, and officially weighing 249 and one quarter pounds. He captured Olympic gold in 1988. Now, as a professional, he has 39 victories, including 30 knockouts and three world titles. He has two defeats and a draw, all by way of rematch have been changed to victories, making him one of the few men in boxing history to have virtually defeated every man he has ever faced. Ladies and gentlemen, from London, England, presenting the three-time world champion, the linear, legitimate, and universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lenny. When the bell rings, only one will be destiny's hero. Only one will pass from heavyweight greatness to heavyweight legend. So now there's only one thing left to say. Ladies and gentlemen, was taken to upstate New York to spar with 16-year-old Mike Tyson. They lived in the same room for a week, sparred every day in the gym. As Lewis puts it, he bloodied my lip and I fattened his, or I, I busted up his mouth. Now they get together again as professionals as Tyson's late trainer, Costamato, had predicted they would. And here we go. and jabbing and moving his head over. Tyson working in behind the double jab. That's what he said he was going to get back to. Lewis with his own jab, but punching from the back seat. Backing up a little, unlike what Manny Stewart told him to do. Back up and cut for Lewis. He thinks Tyson's hurt. What happened there to Mike, Mike charge a little prematurely? Got off balance, and Lennox took his shot. It's been a long time since Mike Tyson has been hit with a puncher who has the kind of power Lennox Lewis has. Tyson gets in a left hook. Lewis counters with a right as Tyson misses wildly with a second left. Lennox is going to have to hold on, but Mike's coming in behind punches. Look, we're going to see a lot of this fight. The attrition factor is going to become big. Lennox is going to lean on Mike, try and frustrate and hold him, tie him up excessively. All right, stop her, stop her, stop her. Tyson trying to get to Lewis's body with the left hook. Lewis wrapping Tyson up when he gets inside. No expert expected Lewis to try to fight inside with Tyson. Right now, Lewis isn't trying to fight at all. He's just trying to sort of thwart the punches by stepping in and smothering them and then hold on. 
Jab by Lewis. Tyson rocks him with a left hook. Lewis doing a lot of holding in the first minute and 40. Tyson half blocked Lewis's right hand shot. Mike not jabbing his way in though, Bobby, just walking in. Well, he's trying to jab his win, but he's trying to get the right hand to land somewhere too. The hurt Lennox so he can get the left hand combination following. Big left hand by Tyson after the jab by Lewis. He worked that hook off a jab. This time it's Tyson who grabs Lewis as Lennox was about to fire the uppercut. is looking to try and time Mike with that right hand. There you saw it. But Lennox is backing up a little too much. Big right hand over the top by Lewis. Grabs Tyson as Mike falls inside. Lennox is laying on the back of Mike's neck quite a bit. He'll be telling on Mike's back later in the fight. One punch at a time. Neither fighter has put together a coherent combination in the first round. It would be surprising. Settle down, get yourself together, start working your jam. You took all of the anger and slowed him down already by wrestling and tying him up. Okay? Just take your time. Don't let him fight the fight that he's trying to make you fight. Take your time, get to work in your jam. If you hit hitting him with the right hands and uppercut, you just slow down. Maybe two. If you can get two in, that's fine, okay? But don't let this guy try to tie you out. Relax yourself. Three, man. I'm telling him, I'm telling him, I'm telling him. Just stay cool. You we, real we cool. hollering at him, okay? Okay, just relax yourself, baby. That was a good round. You won the first round, okay? Double jab like we work on. Step up and control the second jab. You got every, this Every guy. time you get one, I love. Start using your face now. He's Watch trying to load over his right hands on that. He's going to try to come on top first and then uppercut, okay? Be fast, baby. Be fast. Tyson, concerned between rounds about Lewis holding him and putting okay, his weight on him, asked Ronnie Shields to talk to referee Eddie Cotton. Shields just turned around and made that comment to Cotton, who ignored him and said, come back and fight. Well, the first round, Mike was technically the effective aggressor because Lewis wasn't really aggressive. He threw more punches, he landed a few more. Got to give him the first round, but not by a lot. And now the crowd approves as Cotton warns Lewis for holding. The first warning. Mike, good, nice and easy. Come on. Uppercut. Half blocked. Yeah, the uppercut landed on the elbow of Mike. Coming in, he's got his hands tight. Even there, not really hitting a lot on the way in. It seems that Lennox is more concerned with finding which arm to grab first rather than get his punches in. Jab by Lewis. He hasn't really gotten it going. Now he starts to work in rhythm. Tyson lunging, firing with the left hook. Lewis was gone. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Nice and easy. Come on, pick it up. Tyson fighting at a measured pace. Not the whirlwind that some expect. Lewis seems to believe that the uppercut is going to be a big weapon for him here. It has to be. Big man gets leverage with the uppercut. Mike's coming in, he's ducking down under the punches. He walk right into it. But there, Mike, even with the double jab that he's short, he needs to throw the right hand. As Lennox dips with that right uppercut, Mike needs to fire a straight right hand. He'll catch Lennox on the way in. Now, Lennox seems so eager to throw the uppercut that he may throw it from outside. That can be a mistake if your opponent counters it with the right timing. And Eddie Cotton warning Lewis a second time about holding. Point deductions could be coming. He hit Mike with that uppercut clean, rock Mike's head. Get out, get out! The uppercut is good. Lewis's more dangerous right hand punch is the overhand right. That's his bigger bomb. As round two progresses, 
Mike Tyson is falling into a pattern of lunging and throwing one punch at a time, Bobby. He's not using the jab. There he's trying to use it, but not using it well. He's got to step to it. He, he can't worry if the jab lands. He's just got to get him to the inside where he's got to fire the right to the body, to the jaw, and follow it to the left. At that time, as they joined together, Lewis held his arms in the air as if to say, I'm not the one who's holding it. in round two, and increasingly so as the round progressed. Okay, look, champion, look, listen to me. Remember I told you, you cannot let this man throw too many jabs at you without you coming back with something, right? Okay, look. You're using your, you started using your face, but you quit jabbing. You have to be in this man's chest. You understand? Make this a, a very ugly fight now, okay? I want you right in. the cage. He's slowing down real bad. 35. It's 35, everyone. Left hand. Keep your hands Work up. Work your jab. The jab is pumping now. The jab is pumping. That's what you're waiting for. Right there. Keep your hands up, baby. Keep Fight right the masterpiece up. that round. Dude, you're on your way. No peace. Here you go. Here you go. You're on your way, baby. Three begins after seeming to control the tempo in round one. Mike Tyson slid considerably in round two. Lennox Lewis got his jab working. You heard Emmanuel Stewart say, just keep it up. Lennox Lewis made the adjustments in the second round. Now Mike needs to remake adjustments on his side. Now Lewis not holding, but rather just pushing Tyson off. Right, Mike's got to come back in behind the jab and fire. He can't just he can't just try and hit him with the jab. The jab is not meant to just be a point getter for Mike. It's meant to close the distance and put something in Lennox's face out, to worry out, about. Punch out, punch out, get out, get out, get out. And you heard Ronnie Shields say, get into his chest and make it an ugly fight. The more they fight from this range, the more Lewis's chances increase. All right, stop him, stop, stop. Stop it. Mike can't win the fight at that distance. If Lennox Lewis can set the distance of this fight, Mike has no chance. He has to shut the gap down, get inside, bring the fight to where he's comfortable. Does he look eager enough to do it? Mike looks like he's waiting too much. He doesn't look like he's found his rhythm. And Lennox Lewis's jab is getting finding his mark more and more often. Lewis picking Mike Tyson off with the jab as Mike tries to step in. Able to keep Tyson at long range so far in round three. Right, get out, get out, get out. Come on. Lewis no longer seems to be trying to hit Tyson with anything big, Bobby. He's just tapping it. Well, the jab is a pretty pretty stiff jab, not a real shotgun jab, but it's a pretty stiff jab. Popping Mike's head up, and then when he comes in, Mike, he just ties him up. And almost see Lewis trying to fight his natural tendency to go backward. His mind wants to go forward, his body wants to lean back. And I sometimes think his body wants to go forward, his mind keeps pulling, pulling his body back because he's worried about getting hit with those shots. There is blood around the right eye of Mike Tyson. Tyson blinking a little bit and looking momentarily distracted by what seems to be a nick somewhere near his right eye. That would be the product of Lewis's jam. And there's a huge left hook by Tyson, but Lewis took it well. Lewis took it well. Didn't seem to be anything there. That was Mike's best punch of the fight. But the Lewis chin held up. And now Tyson begins to paw at the blood on his right eye, and Lewis busts him with the right hand. Look at Lewis dropping his hands to his waist. Well, you know what? Come on, let's go. More than one man has gotten cocky and lost because of it. Not the time or the man to do it against. That's where Lewis was holding his hands when Asim Rockman knocked him out in South Africa. I rest my case. His cut man is Dr. Ira Traki, a far superior choice to what was the case in Tokyo against James Buster Listen Douglas, Listen where Tyson's nose. eye swelled Listen while his corner fiddled. Okay, Mike, you're fine, no. Mike. No. You gotta relax yourself. Give me a towel, wipe him. Give me a towel, give me a towel, give me a towel. 
Relax, relax. Nice and relaxed. Now, Mike, look, listen to me. Now, look, you let this guy have his way on the outside. You understand? Don't let this man have his way on the outside. You got to be close to this man. You understand? You got to stay close. And you, when you get close, shoot your upper cousin and go to the body with this man. Okay? Use your face. Right he can't deal with nothing right coming now. to him. Yeah, this fight's going to be over with if you do. You sat down and get yourself together. Drink. You can't just be retentive to do this shit and do this. Shit and do this. Yeah. And shoot that damn up and cut some. The man is tired. Watch Lennox Hughes use that jab really effective. Pop and Mike right on the eye. Pop and Mike right off the side of the head. That jab very effective in that round and the round previous probably is what opened that cut. So as round four begins, Lennox Lewis has gotten the fight to go in the direction he wanted it to go. But Emmanuel Stewart still didn't seem happy between rounds. And Tyson again lands a left hook. But again, Lewis is unfazed. Jab, jab, jab. Uppercut. That's been the Lewis battle. Lewis is fighting a smart fight, jabbing in time, Mike up on the inside. Jab on the wing, get the points. And him with the right hand. Right hand. Right cross landed flush for Lewis. But Tyson took it well. He's got a good chin, Bobby. Mike's got a good chin. He's pretty tough. You're not going to stop him in one shot. I don't think so. I really don't. Another solid right cross, though. You can't take too many of those. You sure can't knock on a man who weighs 250 pounds. Tyson misses the left hook. Lewis counters effectively with the right. Big round for Lewis so far. Body shot by Lennox Lewis. I think right now Mike Tyson's a little bit dazed. I think he's extremely confused. He's not blocking Lewis's right hand, Bobby. Now it's some head movement. Tyson's confidence ebbing. Lewis is right, seeming to grow. Mike seems to be loading up just a little too much, Jim. He's taking a fraction of the speed of his punches, giving Lennox enough time to cover up. There, Mike came in with a jab and didn't do anything behind it. No hook, no right hand, no body work. One punch at a time by Tyson. Another right hand lands flush and an uppercut as Lewis, just as he did with Michael Grant, effectively held Tyson's head in position with his left hand and hit him with the right. And that is illegal. I'm surprised the referee didn't say anything. You can't do that, but it's done and over with. If we can see it, we know Eddie Cotton can see it. Jab, jab. Tyson trying to duck inside, but not able to creatively attack. Mike's not throwing enough punches. He, he wouldn't be able to tie his hands up if they were moving. Another right hand flush. That one missed. Tyson lunging with the left hook. Lewis blocked it. Lands another right hand. There were two right hands. They both would have just barely missed the mark. They glanced off each other's shoulders. That would have been explosive. Bobby, is Mike becoming increasingly vulnerable to these right hands because of the cut on his eye? I don't think it's a cut on his eye. I think he's confused. I think he's not making the adjustments. Mentally, it's not clicking in what he needs to do. Tyson, it's not going to be ruled a knockdown because Eddie Cotton is going to say that Lewis was holding him while he hit him. Lawrence Cole, what's the ruling here? He got pushed down, so that would not be a knockdown. He leaned on his back after that punch was gone, and then he pushed him down. Oh, they're ducking a point. And now Eddie Cotton is going to deduct a point. He hit him in the back. Lewis the point was for hitting him in the back, I believe. He hit Mike, he helped push Mike down, and then he hit him in the back. So Lewis loses a point. Don't throw the bag him. Get this motherfucker out of your man. Listen to him, man. He's ready to get caught with some crazy shit. Step it up, the man is finished. Put them shits together, baby. You just you ain't never took it to him, see him. Get your hands. You cannot just run in. The right hand is down. When he jabbed, throw the right hand and the hook behind it. Okay? Just give me a deep breath, champ. Okay? You can give me another round like that. Watch Lennox Lewis on the way in. Mike bends. Now he's on the top of him, and he punches him in the back as he pushed him down a little bit. The weight of 250-pound man, a little tough. Here you see him. Look, jump on the back of his neck, push him down, and hit him in the back. That's a foul. Technically, that's a clean foul. I mean, that punch was nowhere near hitting okay. legal territory. But in the round, Lennox Lewis landed a series of right-hand shots, and Mike Tyson did all but nothing. Mike Tyson right now is having problems adjusting. This round is going to be indicative of how this fight could turn out. If Mike Tyson can come back in this round, 
Tyson tries to counter Lewis's jab with the right hand. Misses wildly. Lewis on target with another combination. Bobby, how do you have it scored so far? Well, I had first round for Mike, the next three for Lennox Lewis, but because he lost the point, he's only ahead by one point. The last round I would have given him, but it drew even when I took the point away. Now there's blood on Tyson's left eye. So both eyes are bleeding. Hey, stop push, stop push. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Get up. Lewis, jab, jab. Tyson, not busy. Mike is resorting. You see Mike resorting to just bending and looking to leap in with a punch. David Tua made the same mistake. Mike's supposed to work him behind the jab. The jabs don't even have to land. He's got to hit him. Cut by Lewis. And again, he holds Tyson's head while he hits. And Eddie Cotton says, don't do it. Let's go. Let's go, Mike. Mike. Mike Tyson's eyes are in bad shape, Bobby Chaz. Mike Tyson's eyes are cut. They're starting to swell. Lennox Lewis is having his way. If Mike doesn't start to put some hurt back on Lennox, so he can't stay out there. He's just got a jab, and even if the jab doesn't land, just use it as a gap closer. But now there's a danger sign for Lewis. With Tyson hurt, Lewis seems to be get waiting up, up, for one up. big shot now. You know what? That's not a smart thing to do. I think he should just work the way he's been working. Work behind the jab like that. He can win the fight easily just by sticking the jab. Or so it would appear. Tyson hasn't looked dangerous for the last couple of rounds. Lewis moving. Tyson finally steps in and fires a body shot. Mike is no workout put right now. He's got to throw punches. He's being outworked, and he's being played with, he's being played, being target practice. Not good for Mike Tyson. Lewis able to load up on the uppercut and still land him. He's able to do whatever he wants. Mike's not posing a threat to him at any part of the, any part of the combination or execution. It is rapidly becoming what some boxing experts predicted might be the case, a technical mismatch. Between a veteran fighter who's been in the ring the whole time against top opposition and has a lot of craft, and another guy who may well have squandered too much of his ability. And you still doing this? Just let that shit go. This fight is over with. You gonna fuck around and let him catch you with some shit if you don't watch? This man is dead out there, but he wants to quit. And you out here playing? Hello. Give me all. Give me all you got. One round. Just give me. Just let me go hands. I just want your hands moving this round. Can you stay close to this man and get your hands moving this round for me? No. You go out. You're fine. No. I need your hands moving. You get this. You got too much distance. You let this guy jab the hell out of you. You gotta move your hands. Now we gotta win this. You want to ask the man to say that let this shit go. Right hand over top, right hand uppercut. Stay alert, man. Any longer this fight going, this man is dangerous. You better get him out of here. Right exactly. Goddamn right. Let us sit ridiculous. Stay alert. Hands up, stay alert. Lewis unloading at will. Here's a right uppercut that looks like open the cut over the left eye of Mike Tyson. Turned it up nice and inside and followed with a little short inside right hook. If Tyson's trainer, Ronnie Shields, seems disappointed and bewildered by his fighter's performance, Emmanuel Stewart is incensed, screaming at Lennox Lewis, you got a dead man in front of you, quit screwing around. Well, what Emmanuel Stewart says is right to a degree, not that he's a dead man, but when he has Mike on the ropes, close him out. Don't give him a chance to get back in the fight. He's dangerous at all times. Now Lewis begins to expend more energy and again fires a right hand down the pipe. Mike's just not punching. Mike's confused. The jab's in his face. Right hand's behind it. Lennox doing what he wants at his leisure. How many right crosses can Mike Tyson take? That was big. Boy, Tyson's got a good chin. Okay. He's hit Mike clean with some big punches, and he's a good puncher, Lennox Lewis. Mike's showing a rock chin. When he hit David Tua with two of those shots in the first round, Tua didn't want much part of him from that point forward. Crunch with the body shot by Tyson. One punch at a time, though, won't get it done. It absolutely won't. One and done, he's never going to win this fight. 
Lewis misses with that right hand. Begins to paw again with the jab. And Emmanuel Stewart gets another stricken look on his face in the Lewis corner. Lennox Lewis is content right now to just stay outside, stick the jab, and not really try and put a hurt on Mike. And Emmanuel Stewart wants him to finish this. Target practice. Handy from a baby. This is easy for Lewis. If he doesn't get caught with something big, he's going to walk to victory. And Mike's going back. Mike's going back. He's not affected whatsoever. Easy, nice, nice and easy. Come on, step back. Come on, step back. But step remember, back. Tyson back. remains dangerous. He lost all of the first four rounds to Franz Botox on all three cards, and then knocked him out with a big shot in the fifth. Stop, stop However, Lewis is no Franz Botox. Now, Lewis does not have the chin of Botox, but he's also a much better fighter, much better defensive fighter, much better offensive fighter, 10 times more dangerous than right now, commanding the show. There's a little mouse under the left eye of Lewis, so Tyson has done some damage with the right hand. He landed one good right hand, left uppercut, and a right hand over the top a little bit, a bit ago, but again, one and two, one and done, not enough. And you wonder how long Mike will be able to see effectively out of two eyes that are swelling rapidly. Round six of a scheduled 12. Uppercut lands plus again. And again, Lewis had time to load it and fire it. Mike seems to be befuddled. He seems to be totally confused. And he, I think just a piece of him has gotten stuck. I think Lewis is waiting in there because he thinks Mike is going to quit. Keep throwing them damn uppercuts at him. He can't get away from him. Keep shooting uppercuts. What is this coming up? Seven, eight. There's no way to where this man should be in here this long. And the longer he's in here, the dangerous it is. You keep working the jab, but you got to add to it. You, you, every time you get you hesitate. You start to throw the shot, then you hesitate. Let the stop go. The man ain't that dangerous. Finish the shot, go in, and come back with your right hand. You understand? Let your hands go. That's all we're telling you to do right now. Everybody can't talk in the corner. You can do it. One at a fucking time. You can do it. Listen, Mike. Don't worry about it. Be fast. You understand me? Faster. Lennox loose is standing there doing what he wants. There's a left and a right hand. Mike offering up almost nothing in return. Same replay, slow-mo. Left hand, right to the temple. And then he just gets out of the way because Mike doesn't counter fast enough and doesn't really counter enough. Well, if ever Mike Tyson needed one lightning shot, now's the time. Lennox Mike Lewis seemingly building a lead on the scorecards, although with the points deducted for holding and hitting. Bobby, how do you have it through six? Well, right now, after six, I have it four and one, one even, because the one even round was the point taken. Lennox was clearly winning the round, but he fouled Mike. Right now, 58-55, it's a three-point edge. Mike Tyson is quickly approaching the point of no return. Another good right-hand shot for Lewis. Tyson not doing much of anything. Jab for Lewis. Tyson at range where he can't find it. Another big right hand. Target practice. pushed off with a forearm, which is technically illegal. It's not called an awful lot, but nonetheless illegal. Biggest upset of the night. Uh, stop punch, stop Every punch. warning by Cotton so far goes to Lennox Lewis. Mike Tyson hadn't been close to committing a foul. He really hasn't. He's, uh, he's a little too docile tonight, all the way around. Now I see no meanness in his eyes. Now blood trickling from the nose of Tyson, as well as both eyes. Huge right hand get up, by get up, Lewis. Get up, get up, get up. That was mostly blocked by Mike, but he's not offering up anything back. He threw a small left hook to the body. Nothing there. Mike Tyson is being dictated to by the all-important Lennox Lewis jab and a good right hand with pinpoint accuracy tonight. Mike Tyson is being dictated to by craft, technique, professional skill. That's what Lewis has in addition to his size. He certainly demonstrated some of the very best of it tonight. Huge right hands. They're missing. They're glancing blows. But Tyson's doing nothing in return. And the blood and the swelling increasingly distracting to Mike. Get out. Get out. Come on. Get out. Do what he's going to need to do to win this fight by the
decision. Low blow by Tyson. That's the first time he's had a foul. Eddie Cotton didn't see it. Eddie Cotton was in a bad position behind Lennox Lewis. But Mike's not looking up like he's on sturdy feet right now. His legs are squaring off. They're a little bit rubbery. And right now, he is getting teed off on You know, you can't spend five years in Class C ball and then go pitch in the World Series. That's what Mike Tyson is finding out right here. It just doesn't work that way. Listen to me, champion. No, listen to me. Listen to me. Why, Mike? No. Cuts are nothing. No, you understand? Nothing. Listen to me. You're fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world again. You understand? Uh, not many people can do that. You understand? Now, look, I'm not going to sit out there and just let you do this. You understand? You have to throw your punches. You understand? For God's sake, you have two hands. You understand? Just let your hands go. Yes, you can. No, let your hands go. I want your hands to move. You done took this guy's best shot. This guy got nothing for you. The guy you took his best shot. This guy's getting tired. It's time for you to go to work, brother. Come on, man. Go to work. You, you took his hard. best shot. Lennox Lewis using that jab in another right hand. Left hook behind it. Just constantly working a beautiful right hand over the jab. Lennox Lewis keeping Mike at bay with the jab. An overhead view. There's a poking little left. There comes the right hand over the jab. Mike not throwing enough punches to make Lennox worry about anything. Lennox Watch doing out. what he wants. Occasionally, Lewis has felt a significant punch from Tyson, thus the swelling under the left eye. But basically, Mike has thrown one punch at a time, and most of them ineffective. Lewis is the only man in the fight who's landed a combination. There's a three-punch combination. There's another right cross. Mike just ducking, not firing. Mike almost appears to be, almost appears to be resolved that he's not going to win this fight. He'll just stand here and take it, take one swing here and there. But it doesn't look like he's trying to win. You have to put yourself in a position to win by fighting. He's not fighting. Ronnie Shields was trying to say to Tyson in a subtle way that he'll consider throwing in the towel if this gets worse. What a letdown it would be to the Tyson public to see Iron Mike throw in the towel. There's a beautiful right hand their body, but he should have came up top at the left hook. because there's no standing eight count in the back. Tyson's glove must have been seen to touch the canvas. First knockdown of the fight. Now Lewis goes for the knockout. Hurts Tyson with the right hand. Tyson grabbing and holding on. Almost half the round is left. I don't know if Mike has enough to keep letting it go. Outside fight getting more so. Big shots from Lewis. of Tokyo and the one time he got the Buster Douglas at the end of the eighth round. And that's gonna be perhaps the end of the fight. It'll take some courage for Mike to get up from that shot. He's out. Lennox Lewis knocks out Mike Tyson and banishes him from the upper stratosphere of the heavyweight division right now. The worst performance of Mike's life. Was in against a guy who was way too good. Last man standing. So even though Emmanuel Stewart thought it should have gone quicker, Lennox Lewis gets the last lap. His wisdom plays out. He played it coolly in the ring. 
and he waited until Mike was most vulnerable and took him out. Lennox didn't take any stupid chances. It's a smart move with smart boxing. He dominated Mike from start to finish. Mike never got on track, and Lennox didn't let him get a chance to get in the game. Would you call that one of the better Lewis's performance you've seen? That may be the best performance I've seen Lewis to date. And it answers the question of who's the best heavyweight for now, doesn't it? It does for me. Knockout, Bobby. You watch the right uppercut. He hurts Mike with, and then hits him with a beautiful left uppercut following. Mike there, I wasn't sure if the right knee touched. I thought it didn't, but evidently Eddie Cotton thought it did. You watch his left uppercut lift up right on Mike's jaw. You see him, his legs buckle, and I still can't, his knee did not hit the canvas. He does not go down. Moot point. He does not go down. There's no standing eight count. Eddie Cotton so, made so a if mistake. If he didn't go down, then in effect, the knockdown count was a benefit to Tyson because it gave him a chance to recover. And here's the end. Mike is caught with another right hand, and this is it. He is done. That one a la Hasim Rockman, too. Well, it took Buster Douglas 10 rounds to knock out Mike Tyson. It took Evander Holyfield 9 plus. Lennox Lewis gets it done in the eighth. Seven plus. Seven plus. And the Lewis right hand now ranks as the dominant weapon in the heavyweight division as he showed tonight. That he did, and he has just done a lot to seal his legacy in the Hall of Fame for the future. Walking past us right now, a very happy Violet Lewis, Lennox's mother, who's been with him all the way through his championship run. Lennox Lewis, world junior champion, Olympic gold medalist, three-time heavyweight champion, knockout conqueror of Mike Tyson. What else could he prove, Bobby? Right now, there's not much he can prove. I'm sure he wants to be undisputed one more time. I'm not sure the winner of Ruiz or Kirk, and Kirk Johnson will face him, but I bet you that's what comes out of his mouth in the interview. He'd be a heavy favorite over either. Here are the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here in Memphis, Tennessee, the legacy of a three-time heavyweight champion has been embraced as the referee reaches the count of 10. At two minutes, 25 seconds of round number eight, the winner by knockout victory, and still the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the pride of Great Britain, Lenny. Okay, thank you very much. Lennox, Mike, if you can come on over here. One more Gentlemen. replay look at the crunching right hand, which ended the evening for Mike Tyson and gave Lennox Lewis the biggest, gaudiest, showiest victory of his career. There were those who thought that Lewis didn't prove enough with his decision against Holyfield. Let's see what they think now. And let's go into the ring where Jim Gray is standing by with Lennox Lewis. All right. Th thank you very much, Jim. Lennox, congratulations to you. You dominated this fight. Was that what you had anticipated? Yeah, basically, you know, I just wanted to stay to the game plan, use my job. I kind of, uh, the first round was a bit rough for me because I never, I never settled down. Manny told me to settle down a bit more. And uh, actually, Manny told me to take him out like the fourth round, but still, you know, I just wanted to soften him up a bit more with my jab, but uh, he was still determined. He was still tough, and he can take a hell of a punch because I hit him with some great punches, and boy, he can take him for real. We have Mike Tyson here as well. Mike, have you changed your opinion now of Lennox Lewis? Well, no. Um, believe it or not, I've known Lennox for like 15, 16 years. We've always been friends, but in comp but in competition, we in competition. In competition, the best man has to win. We have to do everything we can. I'm happy for him to give me a fight. The payday was wonderful. I really appreciate it. And if you could be kind enough, I'd love to do it again. I think I could beat you if we try one more time. Mike, what gives you any indication that you could beat him after this performance? And was it a lack of quality opponents going into this uh, well, I, that hurt you? I, I explained before I needed two more fights or three more fights to fight him. But um, I believe if I would have took that route, the fight probably would have never happened. 
He went to wait for me. And again, he was just splendid, a masterful boxer. I just take my hand off to you. And he says, please, if you can do him, give me one more chance, I'd be greatly appreciative. Are you interested in that Thank at you. all, based on the way you, you yeah, controlled this fight? You know, I just wanted to complete my legacy. You know, everybody was saying that, you know, this fight is going to uh, count on my legacy. So I just wanted to prove to the people that, you know, I'm the best fighter in the world, on the planet. No guy test this month. You prove that right now. You were quite annoyed. You had some very derogatory things to say about Mike coming into this fight. You said you had to win this fight to clean up boxing. Do you feel you've accomplished that? Well, I just showed, I showed boxing, you know, who's the best in the world. I went out there and showed him I'm a pugilist specialist. I can adapt to any style. And, you know, he showed me one style that a lot of people didn't think I was going to be able to deal with. But I was able to deal with it. Uh, a lot of people thought he was going to get away from my jab, but nobody gets away from my jab. Mike, you behave tonight. Everybody. His biggest fans, brother. Manny Stewart, saying. say that again. I was telling Mike, I'm still one of his biggest fans. He's given me so many thrills, man. You know, go back to Roderick Moore, you remember? Friend Roger. Mike, you've given all of us a lot of excitement. Most thank you. In the last 50 years. Thank you very much. I just, it was just beautiful. I'm just so happy you gave me a chance. Nobody wanted to give me a chance. Don King didn't want to give me a chance. I'm just happy someone gave me a chance. Thank you. The champ and Mike, how sorry are you guys that this fight did not occur many years ago when you were at your best and probably you weren't quite as old either? Well, you know, the funny thing about that is. You know, heavyweights, heavyweights mature at different different times. I would say Mike Tyson matured at 19. He was nothing was standing in his way at that time. He ruled he ruled the planet at that time. But I'm like fine wine. I come along later on, and you know I learned my my art, and w I went along, just took my time, and I came along and just ruled. I'm I'm ruling now. Mike, are you sorry this fight didn't take place years ago? It wasn't meant to be. I've known Little Terry since he was 16, 15 years old. I have mad respect. Everything I said was in um, proposition for promoting the fight. He knows I love him and his mother, and I know for, if he thinks I don't have respect and don't love him, he's crazy. So you're saying a lot of the behavior, Mike, is certain, just to sell tickets, and, and that doesn't represent well, your true feelings? Well, he knows who I am, and, and he knows I'm not disrespectful. I, I respect this man as a brother. He knew me ever since his friend Bernie and Cuss were together, and he knows I have the much respect for him. Like I said before, he's a magnificent, a prolific fighter, and he should continue fighting. I would just love for him to give me another shot. How important was it for you tonight, Mike, to come out here and be a sportsman and behave in the ring? Oh, no, it was very, but I, I would say I love and respect him too much to do anything disrespectful to him. And he knows that. And for him to think that is absolutely crazy. Mike, we appreciate your time. You're most gracious in defeat tonight, and I think a lot of fans out there will appreciate the way that you've handled yourself tonight yeah, after some disappointing Bernie. moments and some behavior in the past that hasn't been very well at all. Excuse me. Lennox, what now happens for you? Where do you go now? You've basically proven everything. You've beaten everybody. You've avenged the losses you've had, and you've conquered the man who you said would make your legacy. What now? Well, you know, I'm going to take one day at a time, see what happens after this. I just wanted to complete this goal. Everybody was asking me what I'm going to do after this fight. But, you know, I'm the best fighter in the world. I just wanted to prove that to the whole planet. And, uh, you know, I'm going to take one day at a time. When he bit you, what was your reaction back on January 22nd? And did you think this one was going out the window? Shit, I was shocked, you know, because I'm saying we're two, we're two fighters. We're going to fight it out. Why not let's fight it out? But the man grabbed my leg and bit it. I was shocked. And then in some, in some way, I thought he was trying to get out of the fight. But then I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get him back in the fight, you know. It, f biting was first blood. I got second blood tonight. Well, let's take a look at that second blood. We have a chance to look down at the monitor. If you'll jump forward here for us and tell us what happened on the knockout punch. He had already gone down with the standing oh, eight yeah. count. I was noticing he was ducking to his, to his left, to my, to my right, and I just wanted to catch him as he was doing that. And I, I caught him right on the chin, chin, and he went down. But I'm telling you, so, some of those punches I caught him on the right side, he took like a man. And, and I was, I was shocked that he was able to t take him because I felt him right through my hand. Were you surprised that he was only one punch and out tonight that he put together no combinations? No, you know, I, you know I'm thinking I'm Mike Tyson at his best. I'm in there uh, not taking no chances, just, just waiting for my time and just going ab about my sport as a pugilist specialist. Would you give him a rematch? Is that, is, is that a, a legitimate request after this? Well, and, and you know, you he's, he's asked for one. I definitely would consider it, you know, but uh, it depends what the people want. Uh, you know, I'm going to take one day at a time. Uh, Emmanuel Stewart, the best trainer in the world. No guy tests this trainer. Last question. Possible retirement. Might this have been the crowning achievement and, and you'll say goodnight? And yes, possible. Anything is possible. Big up all crew.
Lennox Lewis, congratulations yes. to you. Terrific Good fight tonight. Okay. All right, Jim Lampley, let's go back All down right, to you. Thank you, Jim.